Welcome to Casey's Field. The scrap between Dundalk and St. Patrick's Athletic for the third automatic European spot continues into another week. Neither side blinked last week. St. Pat's defeating Bowes, Dundalk collecting the points at Finn Harps. Tonight, the Lily Whites welcome Sligo Rovers with the relatively new bitter red manager John Russell now in a process of taking stock and assessing his squad in the season's remaining matches in the hope of making a greater challenge themselves for Europe next year. More defending for Dundalk to do from this corner kick. In it goes, and that's a good one, and it's hit the post. Oh, and it's in! They are in front, Sligo Rovers. Dundalk had a let off, the ball striking the post, but it's put away. It was Levac. Frank Levac with the finish, and it's his fourth goal of the season in the league. And Sligo Rovers take the lead against Dundalk. They had a let off when the header struck the post. We'll have another look at it in just a moment, but Frank Levac on hand to smack it home and give Sligo Rovers the lead. We, we just mentioned that Sligo growing into the game and the next to fall in, but the dog was very, very disappointed. It was a free header. There was a bit of contact, maybe not enough for a penalty. It was just, just times that well, the midfield and defenders are looking up. Lionel Kane for me, he's too central. I want to see him hold his width a bit more. That's better from Runa Hoga. Hoga. This cross was intended for OK, and here's Alfie Lewis! What a goal! Oh! Alfie Lewis! that beyond the stretch and the reach of Richard Brush and Dundalk have levelled at Casey's Field and Alfie Lewis gets his first goal for the Lily White. it's Dundalk 1, Sligo Rovers 1 I think that, that's as good a goal as we've seen here in the last number of years we have seen some special ones just the ball came to me, just nonchalantly knocked it out of his, out of his feet strode up and absolutely smashed it into the top corner lovely little touch, just if you can nonchalantly just smash a ball for 25 yards into the top corner, that's a wonderful strike Banks with the long clearance away. Mountnick finds Hoga. Hoga. Still Runar Hoga. Really nicely done between Hoga and Joe Adams. And Hoga is in the penalty area. He trills it across. Ryan O'Kane. Oh, yes. Ryan O'Kane has done it again. Runar Hoga, the architect of the goal. Wonderful play by the Norwegian. Ryan O'Kane with the instant kill and the instant finish. It's some dog two. Sligo Rovers won. I think Runa Hauger just showed exactly why you get so frustrated with him there at times because he has so much ability. He doesn't show it often enough, but he did on that occasion. Great strength initially to hold off the defender. A little one, two, a wide. But Joe Adams, and once he gets in there, he just got his head up and he's whipped a wonderful ball in. I think he might have been looking for McMillan, but he just drilled it in. And Ryan O'Kane, great first touch. Setups have opened, an instant finish. Rush didn't have a chance. Throw in to Sligo Rovers. Paddy Kirk. Here's Aidan Keener. Keener again. Keener nice with feet. really good feet. And more good feet by Keener. And Keener's shot is across Nathan Shepard. And it's found the bottom right corner. And Sligo Rovers have got an equalising goal. It's Sundjok 2, Sligo Rovers 2. And Aidan Keener gets a 16th goal of the season. And it's a solo goal and it's a brilliant goal. And Sundjok are stunned. It's a superb goal. He, he, he showed that three or four times already this half. Really quick feet. He's just opened his body up as if it's going to shoot with his right cut back. And He's just drilled one into the far post and Shepard got a small touch on it but it wasn't able to get a strong enough hand to go with the post but you can't take away the, the, the quality of, of Keener there. Throw in for Sligo, in it goes. To talk, need to get this away. Adam McDonald can't connect with it and John Martin has won that well and he's slipped it behind and Burke is after this, or Ward rather. Here's Keen Ward up to the edge of the penalty area, looking to tee up Ryan O'Kane, oh, he's the oh, he stopped the crossbar. Oh, a stunning break by Dundalk. And Keith Ward tees up Ryan O'Kane. And just the tiniest bit of elevation, too much. And the ball comes off the crossbar and goes over. That's a superb break. Yeah, I think it started in the middle. But <laughs> Sam Bowen in the middle. But great pace by Ward as well. Great awareness. And you're just wondering there, did Ryan O'Kane have any time to take a touch and drill it home the way he did in the first half? But he chose to hit it the first time and he's only inches away. Well, if something's to happen, you do get the sense that it might come from Ryan O'Kane, or it may well come for Sligo, and it has come for Sligo. Sligo lead. Max Matter. Max Matter with the finish. Untidy at the back by Dundalk, and Sligo capitalise. It's Dundalk 2, Sligo 3. And again, it's come just a, a spell with Dundalk or banging on Sligo's door, but sloppy play with Dundalk. They lost possession in the midfield, and Matter done well. He's off balance, took a touch. I was able to just regain his composure and slip it past. His seventh Shepard. goal of the season. 
Pushed away by Seamus Kill. Nathan Shepard. Now Boyle. Long and direct by Boyle towards Martin. Gets in ahead of him. His marker. He's it's in. It. It's Keith Ward who's got the goal. In the second minute of injury time. And he's thrown to Dunk at night time. It's the Dunk three. Sligo Rovers three. And credit and kudos to John Martin for that. Yeah, he for the header down. Man. He's got up with a bigger man, Pinnegan. He just got a great leap on him. But that's what the dog have needed, those people making those runs in behind it. Once he gets in there, Keith Ward has done excellently well, he just kept his head down, got over the ball and slotted it into the far post. So can the dog turn the tables on that patch with those and they can last gas one. Martin, Colm Horgan defending it for Sligo, referee still hasn't blown the whistle. The dog did come in injury time, you have to say, and the referee does sound his final whistle of the game. And it's been a thrilling encounter here between these two at Casey's Field and it's finished 3-3. I mean, we could have been two or three up in the first ten minutes, um, but the way the game turned out in the end, um, we showed a lot of uh, really good grit, character, um, determination to get the equaliser in at a time. So from that point of view, whereas we would have liked to get three points tonight, uh, I think we'll, we're happy to take the point. Yeah, I think it had a bit of everything. Um, really disappointed, obviously, 3-2 up, scored three goals away from home. and. You know, to be going into the 90th minute uh, and then to concede later on, it's a uh, sucker, sucker punch for us to take, to be honest. But I'm um, really proud of the players, thought they uh, played really well, especially second half.